So what does a fuel cap and a tip of a tail rotor blade have in common? Hi, my name is Randy Rolls and welcome to this installment of the FAA's Rotorcraft Collective Series. Over the next few minutes, we will review some best practices for pre-flighting your aircraft. A safe flight requires a solid pre-flight inspection. How many have you done? Dozens? Hundreds? Maybe thousands? In spring of 2011, a student pilot conducts an R-22 pre-flight inspection. During the training flight, the student, as instructed, enters an auto-rotation. The helicopter experiences a pronounced vibration and yaw. The instructor takes control, continuing the auto-rotation. The helicopter descends into the trees, the tail boom separates, and the aircraft ends up on its side. The two airmen receive only minor bruises. A fuel cap came off in the auto-rotation and contacted the tail rotor, causing a loss of tail rotor thrust. The instructor failed to perform a final walk-around inspection. This is just one example of the importance of a thorough pre-flight inspection. How about your next flight? You've checked the aircraft maintenance status and you're well rested. Now it's time to prepare for the pre-flight inspection. You or your staff should schedule in adequate time for a pre-flight inspection. Rushing through a pre-flight is inviting problems. To prepare for a pre-flight inspection, consider building a pre-flight kit and do the following. Verify you have the most current checklist. Double check your flashlight works and possibly have a backup. Have ready any special pre-flight tools the operation calls for. Now you are ready to complete the pre-flight. Let's look at some best practices. No rushing. Plan ahead to allow adequate time for a thorough pre-flight considering all conditions. Don't rush. Avoid distractions and mitigate interruptions. Enforce a pre-flight no distraction policy. No unnecessary conversation. No eating or drinking. No use of unnecessary electronics. The greatest potential for distraction is your cell phone. Consider leaving it in the cabin until you're all done with the pre-flight. And if interrupted, go back at least two steps or start from the beginning. Personal items. Secure headgear and other personal items on the flight line. If you wear a flight suit, zipper every pocket to prevent FOD. Tie downs, covers, locking devices, ground handling equipment. Remove and securely stow flyaway gear. Solid footing. Use caution even on non-skid surfaces, particularly when wet or iced over. Always use at least two points of contact. Secure aircraft. Ensure all panels, cargo, and doors are secured. Rotor clearance. Verify blade tip paths are clear of obstacles. Announce before you manually move a rotor blade so that other people stay clear. Fuel levels and fuel caps. Use a trusted method to verify fuel level and correct fuel type. Don't use the aircraft fuel gauge as the sole measure of quantity. Always check that fuel caps are secure. Aircraft alterations. Has any aircraft equipment been added or modified? Are there supplemental checklist items that you have to check in addition to the normal checklist? Red flags. Does your maintainer use a visual indicator of a grounding maintenance activity? Final walk around. Conduct a final walk around before boarding. The pilot or trained crew member should always be the last person to board. Before start, perform a final check that main and tail rotors are untied and the tip paths are clear. Many pilots discover issues that were missed during a pre-flight just moments before. A small issue on the ground can become a very big issue in the air. A final walk around is one sure way to keep the rotors safely turning. Post-flight inspection. Every flight should end with a post-flight inspection, which may reveal a discrepancy now instead of during the next pre-flight. Conducting countless pre-flight inspections can lead to complacency because of its repetitious nature. When you consider the consequences of a lax pre-flight, it becomes apparent that you need to stay at the top of your game. Discipline yourself to detect subtle changes like a reverse safety wire, broken slippage marks, leaks, etc. If you have any doubt about a component's airworthiness, check with your mechanic. Once you put on the seatbelt, you are committed. For the FAA safety team and the U.S. helicopter safety team, I'm Randy Rolls.